Shalom. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega, the root and offspring of King David and the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah. These are all his titles, but his name is Yahawashai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles, the true leaders. That's right, the true leaders of Israel from the great millstone, starting with the head apostles, followed by the elders, the bishops. Yes, double honors to our leaders and salutation, peace always, always to my fellow laborers. That's right. The men on the highways and on the byways doing the sit-downs lesson and feeding the sheep. I pray that this message find you in perfect peace. Always shalom to the hopeful elect, starting with 144,000. That's right. Oh, that's right. 144,000 first hmm? and then followed by the large multitude. That's right. The 144,000 are going to be your kings and priests ruling under our King Yahawashai, the tabernacle of David. And then the large multitude, men, women, children. Oh, yes. This family reunion with our king. Oh, fam we don't want to miss it. It's going to be glorious. But certain things have to happen. The son, and eh, that's why right, the son of perdition is being revealed. Esau, he himself proclaimed white man. He cannot hide anymore. All, all the nation, everybody now knows that Esau, Edom, that's right, is the son of perdition. And some of them, they know that they are going into slavery. Family, we're going to bring it all out. Sit tight. Sit tight. And I hope this message here, I hope you are edified. I hope this message comforts you. Just so you know that it is the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, that has given us the spirit to do this lesson. Family, he is showing us everything that he's doing. When I tell you that the Lord is working with us, family, oh yes, Yahweh is with us through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. The prophecies are jumping off the pages. Everybody knows that Esau, Edom is the cancer of the world. And we're going to prove it. This is today's monologue from our friend here. I don't own this video. Eh? This gentleman here, that's why George Galloway, he's been around for a long time. Family going back to Nelson Mandela days. That's right. But he has a spirit of Jake. I see the way he talk. He's just, just, he has a spirit of Jake. Remember the Lord says what? My heritage is unto me like speckled birds. So we're going to come looking like all these nations. Keep that in mind. Okay. Keep that in mind. So this is his monologue this afternoon. And he went in. He went in. This is probably the best monologue for me personally. This is the best I've seen from him. So I'm going to allow him to speak. And I have another clip. Hopefully I can bring it out through the spirit and power of our king. Our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. This is family. This is the testimony of our king. The redeemer of Israel. Our big brother. The root and offspring of King David. Yahweh Shai is what? Is the spirit of prophecy. Nobody thought self-proclaimed white men will be revealed. The son of perdition. Let's go here. Let's bring out the precept before I bring this clip here. Events prior to the Lord's second coming. You hear that? Events prior, meaning these events, these things that are happening right now. The fact that Esau is dropping bombs on children, pregnant women. That's right. That's, these things have to take place hey, before Yahweh Shai comes. And these are part of the tribulation. This is the beginning stages of it. But let's go. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting from verse 1. This is the NLT, New Living Translation. Now, dear brothers and sisters, pay attention closely. Hey, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord, the anointed Hamashiach. How will we be guarded to him to meet him? Let me repeat that again. Now, dear brothers and sisters, let us clarify some things about the coming of our Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, and how we will be guarded to meet him. He said, don't be so easily shaken or alarmed, okay, by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. 
Don't believe them. Even if they claim to have had spiritual vision, a revelation or a, a, a letter supposedly from us. Don't be fooled by what they say. For that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against the Most High and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The fallen away, which was 68 to 70 AD. But the man of lawlessness, who is that? Esau Edom is going to be revealed and he's been revealed right now as we speak. You see, the, the clean shaven, the tie, and calling yourself white. No, everybody knows that you gave yourself the name white. And 1681 in Virginia, your biblical name is Esau Eden family. Oh, yes. Through the spirit family, we're going to prove it. And he says here, he, he says here, reveal the one who brings this. No, no, let's go, let's go, let's go back. Don't be fooled by what they say. For that day eh, will not come. What day? The day of the Lord. Until there is a great rebellion against the Most High and the man of lawlessness is revealed. That's Esau Edom. The one who brings destruction. That's Esau Edom, self-proclaimed white man. Remember the Lord told you that the earth was given into the hand of the wicked family. I'm going to allow this gentleman to speak. And he went in. But let's continue here first. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God. Because why? He thinks he is God. Esau Edom, that's right. He gave you sweet baby Jesus. He says he is the son of the Most High. And he is the Most High. He says, now I have science. I have technology. I don't need the Most High. I can piss off the Most High. That's right. That's what he's saying. He said he will exalt himself. That's what he's doing. And defy everything that people call God. Mm? We know God is just a title. That's why we say power or the Most High. All this nation, they have what? They, they call God, 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 God. But we know who we serve. The almighty power, Yahweh. Yahweh Shah. He says, and every object of worship. He says, he will even sit in the temple of the Most High, claiming that he himself is God. I already told you. That's why there are people out there worshiping sweet baby Jesus, waiting for some, some blonde hair, blue eye, pale skin to come and save them. Man, these people are lost. 21st, 21st century and you still believe in fairy tale. He says here, don't you remember that I told you about all this when I was with you? You see, Apostle Paul is doing what? It's reminding you that all these things have to take place. Esau have to be revealed and family, they, everybody is revealing Esau. Hey? And he says here, and you know, just listen to this. He says, and you know that what is holding him back for here, listen to this. Let's go back here. He said, and you know what is holding him back? For he can be revealed only when his time comes. The Lord is the one holding him back. But now the Lord is revealing him. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly. Now it's been what? Manifest. Because nobody in their right mind will be dropping bombs on hospitals. Eh? That's right. That's what Esau is doing. But we're going to allow this man to speak. He says here, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly. And it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Who is holding it back? Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. He says, then the man of lawlessness will be revealed, which is what? Esau Edom. But the Lord Yahweh Shai will kill him with the breath of his mouth. That's what we are doing right now. That's why our mouth, family, we are using our mouth right now. The men of the Lord, this is what they're doing before. They are king. They are big, they are, they are big brother shows up. We're telling you, it's like the kid at the playground. He knows that his big brother is in the house. Eh? And then the bullies are all over the, the, the field. Eh? But he's talking because you know the power behind him. That's what we are doing right now. We're telling you, Esau, Edom. We know what you've done to us. But we are telling you right now that our big brother, Yahweh, along with all the angels, they are coming to lay a whooping. Oh yeah, on you. He says here, the man of lawlessness will be revealed because he doesn't keep any laws. He gives you freedom and liberty. Oh yes, do whatever your heart desire. Who, the Lord said you should not eat pork? No, 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 no. Here, this bacon. I will put this free bacon on your sandwich. He said you should not eat what? Lobster? Red lobster? Are you crazy? No, all you can eat, lobster tail. Come and enjoy it. That's the man of lawlessness. 
That's Esau Edom. He said, the man of lawlessness will be revealed, but the Lord Yahawashai will kill him with the breath of his mouth. That is his prophet. That's what we are doing right now. And destroy him by the splendor of his coming. And Yahawashai is going to bring the lasers eh, in those ships. Esau called them UFOs. We call it the chariot of Israel. That's how the Lord is coming to take down this man. So now let's allow George Galloway to speak. Family, it is a bit long, about 25 minutes, but family was so good that I'm going to just allow him to talk till the end. Hey? Because yes, this is the time that we are living in. This message is not for everybody. It's for the elect. You want some booty shaking video? There's a whole bunch of them out there on TikTok and uh, what is it called? World Star Hip Hop, whatever it's called. Hmm? Instagram. But here is the testimony of our king, the spirit of prophecy. We want to get out of here. And we are here to glorify our king, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So this message is meant for those who are supposed to receive it. And they are the elect. Eh? We are making no apologies. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekwakudad. Let's go. David Cameron once had something very important to say about Gaza. In 2010, when he was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Let's hear it. It's very brief. It may also be clear that the situation in Gaza has to change. Humanitarian goods and people must flow in both directions. Gaza cannot and must not be allowed to remain a prison camp. Cannot and must not be allowed to remain a prison camp. These are very important words. Cannot and must not be allowed to remain a prison camp. The largest open-air prison camp in the world, said the Prime Minister of Britain in 2010. And yet the government, which he now adorns, has continued to treat Gaza as no more and no less than a prison camp. It has been allowed to remain a prison camp, despite the then Prime Minister's powerful words back in 2010. So powerful, I picked them up and retailed them a million times in speeches, articles, interviews, on television, in parliament, on radio, on public platforms. I always quoted David Cameron describing Gaza as a prison camp. Now a prison camp with 2.3 million people in it is a camp just waiting for somebody to break out of it, isn't it? And they would not be committing a crime by breaking out of it, would they? Because if it's a prison camp, which has no legal validity, if the people in the prison camp have never been tried or convicted of anything, they have every right, don't they? 13 years later, and don't forget, that he said, remain a prison camp, which lovers of the English language already know, means it was already a prison camp in 2010 when the Prime Minister, David Cameron, made those remarks. But it has been allowed to remain a prison camp. And the people who broke out of it on the 7th of October not only were committing no crime in doing so, they had an internationally legally enshrined right to resist those who had placed them for, in David Cameron reference again, decades. They had been illegitimately imprisoned in a prison camp. And so all these people who have mindlessly entombed since October 7th that Israel has a legal right to defend itself are factually, legally, completely wrong. The legal right belongs with the person in the prison camp to break out of it, to resist those 
who imprison him, it's they who have the legal right. Just like the Marquis in France were the people who had the legal right to fight back against their illegal military occupier. And the occupier had no legal right of self-defense whatsoever. Now, all of this is pedantry, really, because it's abundantly clear that there is nothing called legal rights in the world today. There is no law. There is no international law. There is no statute of war crimes. There is no statute Remember of the, crimes against the man humanity. of lawlessness. That's Esau. Ian. The Nuremberg Tribunal never happened. Or if it did, what it decided was not worth the paper that it was written on. It is abundantly clear that there is nothing called the International Criminal Court. For if there was, it would already be laying charges. Not just against the people who have massacred more than 5,000 children, babies, sucklings, Children dug out of their mother's womb as she lay dead, who never even got to suckle. If there were anything called crimes against humanity, war crimes, an international criminal court, these matters would already be before it. Neither is there anything called democracy. It's a shamocracy. You get arrested for wearing items of clothing that are here today, gone tomorrow. Home Secretary announces to be a crime. In Germany, it is now a crime to use the slogan, stop the genocide. I mean a crime. I mean a crime that you'll be arrested for, that you'll be jailed for. There's no such thing as democracy when both the government and the opposition have absolutely identical policies in Britain, in the United States, in Canada, in most of the NATO countries that are up to their knees in Palestinian blood over these last five or six weeks. That's not democracy. It's not democracy when 75% or more of your people have already said in opinion poll after poll they want a ceasefire, but only 59 Labour MPs and no Tory MPs can be found in Parliament this evening to vote for what three quarters of the British public want. There's no free speech in this country when the only way you can appear in the mainstream media is to ritually denounce a political organization in Palestine about which you know it seems virtually nothing. I know everything about them. I was there when they were born. Guess who the midwife was? Israel was the midwife of the Hamas that you now can't go on TV unless you denounce as a terrorist organization. Even if your own family has just been buried under the rubble. Even if 21 of your own family has just been murdered in Israeli airstrikes. You won't get past the first sentence in the British broadcast media unless you say, well, of course I denounce Hamas, not the people who murdered my 21 relatives yesterday, no. Kay Burley on Sky News interviewed a woman whose family had just been murdered in their own house. And her first question was, Israel is targeting this bombing, so why did they target your house? Well, anyone who isn't willfully eyeless 
in Gaza knows that they're not targeting anything or anyone at all. They are dropping the most horrifying ordinance on people trapped in a refugee camp or in David Cameron's words, in a prison camp from which there is no escape, even into the waves, even into the sea. So there's no democracy, there's no freedom of speech, there's no international law. We are living in a time of monsters and the monsters are us. The monsters are our leaders sitting in power in our countries, doing what they do on our dime, in our name. However many of us there are on the streets protesting against it. Ten Labour MPs were either sacked or resigned from Keir Starmer's front bench as he continued to insist that not enough Palestinian children have yet been killed to sate the satanic bloodlust of the war machine originating in Washington, echoing through its satraps in Western Europe and being executed, executed being the highly appropriate word by the satrap in the Middle East called Israel. This state of affairs will presumably continue. Although President Macron broke ranks, called for a ceasefire, the next day he did an about turn and dedicated the rest of his life and all of his remaining ardor to the cause of Israel everlasting. Schultz in Germany has said that we're all lunatics, that Israel is waging war according to international law and all of the tenets of humanitarianism. Either these people do not watch What's actually It's a quick thing. You see the common denominator the common denominator, right? Esau Edom. The really demon eh? down on the street in Gaza. In which case they are cowards. Or they do watch it. And they are still ready to support it in every way possible. By criminalizing their own populations, by sending weapons sending warships, sending money, sending ammunition, or in the case of Britain, not even telling us what they are sending. Dozens and dozens of flights of military transport aircraft have flown from England to Tel Aviv, and the government refuses to tell its own people, even its own parliament, what or who is in those airplanes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have to face the facts. Contrary to what Joseph Borrell said, we are living in a jungle. This is now officially a jungle with no laws, no rules, no conventions, no constitutions, just a jungle where the beast who for the moment has the sharpest teeth is in charge of the jungle and the devil can take the hindmost. You hear me talk quite a lot about Satan, whose existence in the world I believe to be self-evident, but it is nowhere more evident than the savage ravings of Western journalists and politicians. I'm not sure which deserves the greater content over this great war crime that we are watching. The Al-Shifa hospital 
it turns out, according to Channel 13 television in Israel itself, has turned out to be a massive intelligence failure. Their words, not mine. I'd say it was the mother of all intelligence failures. Al Shifa Hospital had not a single armed man in it when the Israeli armed forces invaded a hospital. As they trod on the injured, as they trod on the wounded, as they trod on the refugees huddling for warmth and safety, as they trod on the dead bodies of the Palestinian doctors, nurses and technicians that they had killed on their way in, having told us, and this greenlit, though he now denies it, by John Kirby, the White House spokesman, as they entered what they said was, never forget what they said, that the Al-Shifa hospital was the command and control center of Hamas, that in its bunker were Israeli hostages, that armed gunmen ran the hospital, and that it was the epicenter of a series of tunnels, but tunnels, there were none. Command and control center, there was none. Hostages, there were none. Armed men, there were none. There were only dead bodies of patients, of children unplugged from incubators. There were only dead bodies. Do you get me? Only dead bodies in the Al Shifa hospital. And that was the big lie on which they committed one of the worst war crimes, crimes against humanity that the world has seen since the Second World War. I have no idea how long I've been speaking, but I hope I have conveyed to you the power with which I feel that the people of Gaza are in a desperate place which may very well end up with them in Sinai if not drowning in the sea but we in the western world are if anything in an even worse place than that imagine we are in a place where everything that our fathers and grandfathers fought for, every freedom from fascism, from tyranny, that our people fought and died for, in our case in Britain, for a brief but glorious period, standing alone against fascism, Nazism, tyranny, the jackboot, we have gone quietly into that good night. This is the mother of all talk. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. It says, For Esau, self-proclaimed white man, Edom, is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The self-proclaimed white man, he is the cause of all this. But guess what? Who put him there? Genesis, no, Revelation 6, 4, quickly. And then we have another video to bring out and we're going to go through the precept. Revelation 6, 4. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 4. It says here, And there went out another horse that was red, which is why the same people, I'm not saying the man on the screen here, but I'm saying this is what they look like. Because like again, like I said many times, Israel is going to come looking, at, looking like all these nations. It's going to come looking like the so-called Chinese, Japanese, the Ishmaelite, the so-called white man. Eh? But this gentleman here, he strikes me as he has a spirit of Jake. That's just me. Okay. He says here, and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. That's what Esau is doing. Self-proclaimed white men, the ones living on the land right now, we know that we are not picking sides. None of them, what? Uh, they don't own the, the land. 
Because the Lord gave us, told us through prophecy, through the, uh, the, uh, the scriptures, that what the land has to be trodden down by what? By the Gentiles until, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So they are doing exactly what the Lord asked them to do. This is the Lord's movie. This whole thing here is a play. It's a script. Hmm? The whole earth is a theater. And everybody's playing their part. It says here, And power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That's Esau's blessing, the sword. To take, number one, do what? Take peace from the earth. And that's how it says, By thy sword thou shalt live. That's what he's doing. Nobody has caused that this much destruction by what? Esau, Edom. But let's hear it from their own mouth. There's a video that I came across. Uh, one of the brothers, uh, I think I, I downloaded it. Let me see if I have it. I downloaded it. And then uh, let me see if we can play it. Yes, hey Esau. Do you know? Yes, this one here. Please bear with me. I've warned for years. If America does... Sorry. Let's play this. It's only uh, a minute and 52 seconds. Just hear them. They know this word is coming for them. Because they are the one the Lord is about to judge. They haven't received their judgment yet. He said, the Lord, the Lord says what? The son of perdition shall be revealed. We are revealing him right now. We are the mouthpiece of the Lord. Our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. This is his gospel. Listen to this gentleman here. Not repent. The American people are going into captivity. That's what he saw. Captivity. Slavery. Isn't it interesting that we're having a great debate in America about slavery from over 150, 200 years ago? Something that America has never repented of committing. There's never been national repentance of slavery. And we're about to go into slavery as a nation. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I have thought about that. That we have never taken that step to really reconcile what's happened over centuries. But at the same time, Rick, it, the Constitution's not going to save us. No. It, it, that, that's not going to save us at all. And if there's a, an invasion, yes, I believe in preparing. But, you know, when it comes down to... Patriots, the Patriot Movement. No, oh, you've... It's God who's bringing judgment on the land. And you never hear a, a single word out of the Patriot Movement about repentance. Never. Never. Not a single word. I, I, I wrote them off years ago, Doc. It used to be a really big Patriot Movement in America. That's where Alex Jones came from. That, you know, the whole movement, the, the militias, all that stuff. When, when I got started in 1998, and that was a very big movement. And I, I, after... I don't know, so many years, I just, I just got tired of them talking about their guns, their beans, and their bullets. That is your blessing. That's your and blessing. And holes, and how they were going to ride out yes. the New World Order and everything. And it's like, I never heard repentance. It's you will never know. You were created to be the wicked. Hey, you First took, you took, you see, took no uh, peace from the earth. And that's your that's your blessing. Brakate Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Lukakodash. The Lord said you're gonna be revealed, and the people shall take them and bring them to their Isaiah 14 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. For what? For servants and handmaids, meaning slavery, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Let's bring out Jeremiah 30 verse 16 quickly. And family, we have few things to go through. And we're going to show you Esau Eden. The ones living on the land right now. And calling themselves J-E-W. Family, we're going to tell you who they are. Okay, Lord willing. Lord willing. Through the spirit and power of our king. Yahweh Shai. It says here, Jeremiah 30 verse 16. What is the Lord saying? What is the Lord Yahweh through his only begotten son Yahweh Shai saying? You heard from our friend there, uh, George Galloway. He went in. The Western, so called Western civilization, the Lord is about to judge this land. If you can see it, pray that the Lord will give you the eyes of to see it. Because the faith that the Lord has is a gift. Ephesians 2 8. And we don't. 
Family, we don't boast. We don't brag. We boast in the name of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. The one that gave us this faith. Eh? Give us this belief. Family, without that, we would have been through. That we, we, we would have been through. That's why we are extremely blessed to receive, to, to have this message. Hey, it says Jeremiah 30 verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries listed in Psalm 83. All our enemies are listed there. All these nations. It says every one of them shall go into captivity. This man here, he knows what is coming for them. Where is that thing again? Hmm? Ah, what is it? What is it? Ah, come on, stop this nonsense. Yeah, where is that video again? Ah, come on. What is my videos? Oh, yeah, I love it. Just It's just nice to hear it from their mouth. Hey? I've warned for years, if, if America does not repent, the American people are going into captivity. He says you cannot repent. Babylon can never be healed. But let me finish this and I'll bring that. It says here, and all thine adversary, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. All these nations. That's what we're supposed to tell them. Eh? We're not, uh, what's it called? Uh, Bish uh, I-U-I-C, Bishop. What is his name again? Uh, what is his name? Uh, Nate. No. We're telling you what is coming. We're not going to beat around the bush. Telling you that everybody's going to be saved. And then after the Lord has blessed us with spiritual powers, we're going to be able to fly. Eh? Meanwhile, Esau, Edom. After the Lord has blessed us with his, the new body, because the Lord, Yahweh says, we're going to be like him. So the 144,000, we pray that we are among the numbers. After they receive their spiritual power, they can read mine. Eh? Fire can be coming out of their mouth. Then all of a sudden, Esau is going to, all these nations are going to gather together and then come and take us down. Have you lost your mind? The moment the Lord cracked the sky open, remember what I, I read? Esau is the end. Do you know what the end means? That's it. It's over. The curtain comes down. That is the end. It is over. Esau will never rise again. From captivity, Obadiah 1.18, they're all going to be gathered and burnt up. They are the only nation the Lord is not going to have mercy upon. He says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. He says what? We should repent. You can't repent because let's go to Jeremiah. Is it Jeremiah 51.7? I think so. Let me see. Uh, is this C fifty one seven fifty one seven? Where it said we can heal, but Babylon cannot be healed. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Is it fifty? Maybe it's fifty. It said Babylon can never be healed. Please bear with me. Please bear with me. Let me see if I can get it on my phone. Fifty-one nine. Jeremiah fifty-one nine. I didn't see it there though. Fifty-one nine. Yes, it says here, what? It says here, we would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. Forsake her and let every, let us go everyone into his own country. If you are not part of the elect and you're living on the soil of America, you're going to be fueled for the fire. That's what is coming. We're telling you before it happens. If you are, if you are not part of the elect, you're going in to be fuel. You're going to be fuel for the fire. It says, and let us, everyone go. It says, no, no, let me slow it down. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. 
forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. The Lord is about to judge Babylon. But let's go here. Find me there's something I want to bring up. You see this book here? I have them going through this book right now. Hey? Um, uh, our beloved elder brother from, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, from the Chicago camp. Uh, the Markham, always going to. He says, this book is called, Who is Esau Edom? Okay, we're going to go through it. We're going to jump through it. But just to show you, the ones living on the land right now, calling themselves the people of the book. From this book here was written by one of them. Okay? The so-called small heart, the, small, the big nose. This book here, Who is Esau Edom? Let's go back to the, the front page so you, you see what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Okay, this is the PDF form. Who is Esau Edom? And we have the answer. But this gentleman here, he went in. Family, he brought precept. Eh? He brought precept. And I was surprised. I, when I started reading, I'm like, what? They actually allowed this book to be out there? Because why? The Lord is about to judge this man. So what? He's bringing... Before the Lord judges you, guess what? He presents his evidence. Eh? He can just... He presents... That's what right now. He says what? Our mouth, he says, he says, we going to our mouth is good. Let me go back. I don't want to butcher it. Let's go to let's go to um let's go to uh uh second second Thessalonian second second Thessalonian quickly eh? because first the mouth have to destroy him and eh? that's the mouthpiece of the Lord the mouthpiece of the Lord second Thessalonian chapter two verse uh, I think verse uh is it verse six hmm It says here, and then shall that wicked be revealed, mm, whom the Lord Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the prophet. That's what we are doing right now. We're telling you, our big brother is coming with fire. We are just telling you, they're condemning you with our mouth through the spirit and power of our King Yahweh Shai, because he's the one that put the spirit in us. And without that spirit, we won't have no clue who you are. But because of what he has done for us, we have identified you. And it says here, even him who's coming is after. No, no, no. Let's go back here. Mm. It says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Remember that the Lord, the Lord says what? The earth, Job 9, 24. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. And the wicked, hey. Eh? Which is what? Esau, Edom, the wicked is being revealed. You want to know who the wicked is? Malachi 1, 4 tells you the border of wickedness is what? Esau, Edom. He says, and then, the, and then shall thou wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yahweh shall, when he shows up, man, those, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, those brimstone that the laws, man, they said they are heavy. Some of them are like 60 pounds. Can you imagine? Brimstone weighing 60 pounds, dropping on your head. That's what the Lord is bringing. Babylon, oh, <laughs> Esau, you be ready. Now let's get to the book. So a few pages, we're going to go through it. We're going to go through page 10. Hmm? Page 10, where is it? Introduction, page 10. What is this? Page 10. Now, we're going to fly through it. Find page 10. Hmm? It says here, the Khazars. Is it page 10? Yeah. It says the Khazars. Those, those are the people living on the land right now. They have no heart. Because that is, those are, we call the Amalek. Yeah, that's right. Small hearts, big nose. That's right. The one controlling everything. Yes. It says the Khazars were nomadic people who had no traces of what? Hebraic culture. Eh? They had been following a pagan and sex-oriented religion until they had officially embraced Judaism in the 1740 AD while rejecting Christianity and what? Muhammadism, meaning what? Muslim religion. He said the Jewish author and historian Atta Kosla, who wrote what? The 13 tribe. I also have that book. Also conclude that the majority of the East European JEWs, eh? The ones living on the land right now, claiming to be the people of the book, eh? and hence of world Jewry, is of Khazars and not of Semitic origin. You hear that? They converted. Eh? In the beginning of this book, he states 
the large, listen to this family. Hmm? So you know that, yes, they took your identity, Psalm 83. They made sure that they called you after two Edomites. African American. Af after who? Af uh, Scipios, Africanos, and what? Amerigo Vespucci. Both e two Edomites. Hmm? And then they call you Jamaican. They call you Barbasian. They call you Ghanaian. They call you Nigerian. And then they call you Native American, Native Indians. That's right. But nobody knows who they are. They call themselves white. And then they give you black. And one year they call you Negro. And the next, and then one year they call you, no, another century they call you what? Colored. That's right. That's Esau Edom. He said the large majority of the surviving JUWs in the world is of what? Eastern European. From Russia. From Poland. Germany. All these places. It says here. It says here. And thus perhaps mainly of Khazar origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from the Jordan, but from the Volga. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. And the genetically, they are more closely related to the Horn, Olga, and um, uh, Magia tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But family, I want to go to, uh, what is it called? Uh, Ch chapter second is it chapter please bear with me no 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 that's not a uh there's another chapter that i want to bring something quick family something quick just so you know uh where is it no that's not the one i'm looking for please bear with me Uh, what was it? Oh, let me see. I gotta do a lesson on some of these pages, man. This this book is <laughs> it is fire. Um, let me see here. Let me see. Let's go to. There's a page that page is it page eleven? Do I have page eleven? Did I miss page eleven? It's 10. Yeah, I missed page 11. There's no page 11 in this one here. But let's see. Let's jump to page 20. Let's go to page 20. Is this page 22 here? Yeah, let's read a bit here. So here, let's start page 22. It said the people... Let's pick it up from verse... Uh, let's read it. Page 20. Okay, page 20. And then the miss 21 though. Uh man. I don't know why it's missing page. Not all the pages. I have page 21 in my book, but I don't I can't find page 21 here. Anyway, I'm gonna read here. Let me go, let me grab my book quickly and I'm gonna read page 21 and then we're gonna pick it up from page 22. Please bear with me. Page 21, it says here, page 21. Let's go, it says, Esau hated by the Mosai. Okay, listen to this. This is the second paragraph. It said, perhaps the most unique and unusual attribute possessed by Esau Edom is his adverse relationship with the Mosai. The script reveals that the Most High, the power, never had any love for Esau as he did with Jacob. And in fact, the Most High hates Esau. I have loved you, Israel, says the Lord. Yet you say, how hast thou loved us? He's quoting Malachi 1.4, okay? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Says the Lord, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountain and his heritage to waste. For the dragons of what? The wilderness. Because once America is leveled, nothing but pure dragons, all type of willful, uh, no, willful creatures. It says in the book of, uh, I think, um, even Isaiah 33 and Isaiah 34, if my memory serves me right. 
America is going to be a desert. Okay, it says here that the most high hate, it says the most high hatred and anger towards Esau, Edom is not a one time event. It's conveyed in the fact that Edom was, okay, Edom was the, now let's go to 22. It says here, Edom was the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Malachi 1 4. This is no mistranslation as the same concept is also conveyed in the New Testament. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Romans 9 13. This hatred by the Most High towards Esau is an attribute that the human heart cannot accept or embrace. That's why plantation Christianity tells you, Oh no, the love don't hate. The Lord loves everybody. Be quiet. Be quiet. Plantation Christianity is that. I don't know why anybody's still getting up and going to the, the, that hallowed houses. It makes no sense. We are, live, we are looking, look, the last days of the last days and you are still getting up putting your dress on, dragging your kids to that hallowed houses and calling in the name of sweet baby Jesus. Even they themselves don't believe in sweet baby Jesus. And it says here, this hatred by the Mosai towards Esau is an attribute that the human heart, you hear that? The human heart cannot accept or embrace. It's not about our feelings. You see, the thing about teaching this word here, you have to take your feelings out of it. Get your feelings because the church, what did they do? They don't want to offend anybody. Everybody come as you are. No. The true men of the Lord, guess what? They don't hold their sword back. Their sword is what? This Bible, this word here. Eh? Hebrew 4.12. This is the word. And it cut. When this word cuts you, you know you've been cut. Eh? It says here, that's, it says here, this hatred by the Mosai towards Esau is an attribute that the human heart, you hear that? Because you're not ready for it. Cannot accept or embrace. And therefore, many will try to explain it away. That's what they do in the church. But we are not here to explain it away. No, that will be doing the work, the work of the Lord deceitfully. And that's not here. You're not going to get this starting with our head apostles. Oh no, they, they hate heart. That's right. Heart haters. All praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. We don't hold our sword back. He says, thus scores of theologians have avoided this truth of scripture. What the Lord tells you, he says, the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness to him. Theologians, all these big titles. It means nothing to the Lord. Nothing to the Lord. He says, thus scores of theologians have avoided this truth of scriptures or have whitewashed it, you listen to it, whitewashed it into something more appealing to human nature. Yes. And smoothing, preach to me, smooth things. That's right. Tell me I can eat the pork. Tell me I'm accepted. Yes. Yes. LGBT, everybody coming. That's right. Hmm? Hmm? I said the Most High not only hates Esau, Edom, and it's against these people, but refers to them as the people of my curse. Isaiah 34, 5. When I, was when I was going through this book, I'm like, what? This book is good. It says, this curse is not just on Esau, but also his seed and his brethren. He said, but I have made Esau bear. And he's quoting what? I, uh, Jeremiah 49, uh, Jeremiah 49, 10, and also uh, Obadiah. I think someone will die. He said, I have, I have, I, it says here, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is poor and his brethren and his neighbors and he is no more. You hear that? Actually, yeah, I, I think I have it. One second. Please bear with me. Let me see if I can bring it out. Oh, yes. It says here, Obadiah, no, Jeremiah 49, 10, NLT. But I will strip bare the land of Edom, and there will be no place left to hide. Its children, its brothers, and its neighbors will all be destroyed, and Edom itself will be no more. These are the word of the Lord and family. These are not my word. Hey, you see how he's doing? He's going all out. He's taking wickedness to a whole different level. Babies being destroyed in what? Uh, uh, what is it called? Um, uh, what is the thing that they put uh, premature babies in? I can't remember now. What is it called again? Um, my goodness. Is it incubators? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think it's incubators. 
Yeah, family. He's out there. Baby's family. You go to the hospital because you are sick. New mother's family. And this man here is dropping bombs. <laughs> now you know why the Lord hates him. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. And he shall not be able to hide himself. He see this poor and his brethren and his neighbors. And he is no more. Among Esau's brethren were who? The Amalekites. The one controlling everything. They own Hollywood. They own the media. They own the banks. They own the uh, IMF, International Monetary Fund. They control everything. But guess what? Their end is coming. Remember the joy of the hypocrite is only for a moment? That's right. He says here, It was this Edomite kinsmen whom the Most High has sworn war against from generation to generation. Exodus 17, 16. Family, this book here, it's like, how come I haven't... But this book is good. It's amazing. It says, The most high hatred of Edom is not a temporary thing, but it's perpetual. The doctrine that the most high loves everyone. You see, listen to this. Pay attention. Plantation Christianity. The doctrine that you guys teach in those churches that the most high loves everyone does not stand up in light of what the Bible has to say regarding God's merciless position towards the race of people called Edom. Although the churches have tried to alter God's true nature, we find that throughout the Bible, the most high position towards Esau, Edom, does not change. That's right. That's right. I was shocked that they have this book here out there. Eh? There was this, this, it's on Amazon, family. Hmm? It's on Amazon. So, beloved, I'm going to leave it there. Esau has been left bare. Eh? He can't hide. The whole world. You see, Obadiah. Well, let, let's go. Let's, can I bring another precept? Eh? Maybe let's go to... Let's finish off with... Uh, uh, let's go to Job 20. Eh? It says here, let's go to, let's pick it up from, uh, it's a short, yeah, let's go to 24. Job 20, 24. It says here, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bowl of steel shall strike him through. That's the missile that the Lord is bringing. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. That's right. Your new world order, it is a pipe dream. Eh? He says, all darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Remember, the Lord is going to be done away with. Esau, Edom will be done away with. After that thousand years of captivity, he's going to be done away with. The only nation that what? The Lord is not going to have mercy upon. All darkness shall hide in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. That's what the Lord is revealing right now. Because nobody in their right mind is going to be dropping bombs on babies, family. New mothers. Look, look at it. We see mothers. We've seen our fa family. You have a child. Family, you all, you know, druggy, you know, because of all the type of medication you have in you. And now they are dropping bombs on you. That's Esau Edom. He has taken wickedness to a whole different level. Those are the small hearts, family. That's right. Those are the people. They are calling them the people. They are calling themselves the people of the book. Let that make sense. Let that sink in for a second there. He said, All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. Your sins are being revealed. Because before the Lord judges you, he sent his men out there to reveal all your secret. And that's what he's doing. He put a spirit in us, starting with our head apostles, all the way down. We are revealing you. Esau, Edom. He said, the heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. Oh yeah, the nations are going to rise up. Third world war. That's what the Lord is about to do. All these nations are going to go at it. But Esau, Edom is going to be the main target. America. Oh yeah, everybody's waiting to have a piece of America. That time is fast approaching. And this is the Lord's doing. Hmm? I said, the heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart. All the riches that you've gotten. Right now you're building bunkers. You're hoarding all the gold, all the resources. 
Ooh, it's all about to be turned over to the Israelite. And when we come down, because we're going to be with, right now, we are fishers. When we come down, we're going to be hunters. That's right. That's what is coming. We, every hole, every hole, bunker, we're going to know where you're hiding. It's called spiritual powers. And then you're going to be in chains, straight into captivity. It says here, in the increase, it says here, the increase of his house shall depart and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. Now, let's find out why is the Lord doing this? Because this is the portion of a wicked man from the Most High and the heritage appointed unto him by the Most High. This is your destiny. This is your heritage. That's right. This is what is coming for Esau, Edom. That's what he saw. Captivity, slavery. Isn't it interesting <coughs> that we're having a great debate in America about slavery from over 150, 200 years ago? Something that America has never repented of committing. There's never been national repentance of slavery. And we're about to go into slavery as a nation. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I have thought about that. That we have never taken that step to really reconcile what's happened over centuries. But at the same time, Rick, it, the Constitution's not going to save us. No. It, it, that, that's not going to save us at all. And if there's a, an invasion, yes, I believe in preparing. But, you know, when it comes down to... Patriots, the Patriot Movement... No, you've, it, it's God is bringing judgment on the land. And you never hear a, a single word out of the patriot movement about repentance. Never. Never. Not a single word. I, I, I wrote them off years ago, Doc. It used to be a really big patriot movement in America. That's where Alex Jones came from, that, you know, the whole movement, the, the militias, all that stuff. When, when I got started in 1998, you know, that was a very big movement. And... Uh, I, after, I don't know, so many years, I just, I just got tired of them talking about their guns, their beans, and their bullets, and their constitution, and their hidey holes, and how they were going to ride out the new world order and everything. And it's like I never heard repentance. It's I love it. All oh, praises, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, his name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, our king, the redeemer of Israel, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.